Welcome back. And next up is Al from Sensational Systems. Enjoy his talk. Hello, I'm Al from Sensational Systems and ConnectedThings.store. We're one of the biggest online LoRaWAN retailers. Uh, last year, you might have seen us at the Things Conference running the conference shop. Uh, unfortunately, we're stuck here in the workshop, um, but next year we hope to be back doing the same. Um, I thought it'd be good to do a little roundup of the new devices and sensors that we've had in 2020 and look at some of the new stuff we've got coming in 2021. So 2020, a bit of a write-off, uh, but actually really good year for LoRaWAN sensors. There's lots of interesting specialized sensors that have come out. Uh, so I'm gonna go through some of those. Uh, so the first up, we have Torquepool's OY1310, which is a LoRaWAN water meter. So this is a two-part device. Uh, it's got a water meter, a traditional mechanical water meter, which has got a reading on it. So you can see the numbers roll over as water is used, but it also has a little spinning disc on the top which is interfaced into the LoRaWAN part of this and it's read optically. So as that rotates, when the water is used, this is recording how much is being used and it can send that back uh, daily um, in a configurable um, interval. Uh, it also has some interesting features, including uh, leak detection. So it can work out if you've got a continuous low level flow of water that there's probably a leak rather than it being normal use. Uh, and it will put a flag into a packet and send it up so you can see that you've probably got a leak uh, and get in there and have a quick look before it becomes serious. So these have been really popular in 2020 and I think it will be popular again in 21. Um, it comes in a hot water and cold water version. It's got lots of uses there in smart buildings, especially where things like offices aren't particularly occupied at the moment. It's interesting to see if water is still being used. Um, and also when you've got homes, uh, again, that might not be used and you want to see exactly where your water is going. So that's that one. Um, and in 2020, we also started to stock LSIS devices. So they have a couple of ranges. They have the ERS range. So these are indoor office and home type sensors. Um, they come in different varieties. What I'm holding here is the LSIS CO2 light sensor. So this is the lowest cost real CO2 sensor that we found. It works really well. It gives very accurate readings and it's got a lot of configurability. You can set all the different timing intervals and things. It's really powerful, um, but it's also really good price. Uh, so CO2 has been popular uh, this year for um, COVID applications. So trying to work out how often the air in a room has changed um, and whether you're getting fresh air in has obviously become a bit of a, an interesting topic. So that's a popular one. And I think we'll see a lot of those selling in 2021 as well. Um, Elsys also have their ELT range. So these are the industrial sensors. Uh, they come in different versions. There's uh, analog and digital input versions and things, but I'm holding here the ultrasound version. So this is really interesting. Um, so you can mount it up uh, and on the top of a tank and uh, figure out how much is left in that tank. Uh, it bounces a signal off the top of the, the surface and using the time of flight works out how much is there. We've got customers using this uh, for monitoring levels in paint tanks in a factory. And um, it's also useful for monitoring levels in waste, uh, in bins or in hoppers uh, in manufacturing. So lots of different options. So that's that one. Um, on other industrial applications, MCF88, um, their kit has been really popular this year. Um, probably the most popular device has been the uh, the relay. So this is a mains powered LoRaWAN device. Uh, it takes mains in. Uh, it's got a relay uh, that has contacts that are switchable over LoRaWAN, um, and it can switch up to eight amps. It's a Class C device, which is really cool. So it means that it's very quick to respond. If you send a, a message to it, you don't have to wait for it to transmit first, it just goes. And so it can switch within a second or two. Uh, and that's really exciting, especially as the things network, the public network is now gonna support Class C devices. So I expect we'll see lots of interesting uses for these. Um, MCF88 also have a lot of industrial transceivers for connecting and interfacing with other things. So serial Modbus devices for use in energy metering and solar charge controllers, all sorts of things. This I'm holding here is a four to 20 and zero to 10 volt interface. 
So this can interface with a lot of existing devices. 4 to 20 and 0 to 10 volt are very common in industrial applications. There's lots of sensing elements you can get, including really high temperature, temperature probes and pressure probes. Um, and often those interface using 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts. So this box will connect them up. Uh, you can set thresholds. So you can say you're inter interested when it goes above a certain value or below a certain value. Um, and those thresholds have upper and lower bounds. So you have a bit of hysteresis in there. So it's really well thought out device um, and very good for retrofitting. So next up, let's look at the home and office sensing end of the market. Um, Tectelic have released the third generation of their smart room sensor. So we've had the smart room sensor for a couple of years and it's been very popular. It's very powerful and configurable. Uh, it's probably the most configurable thing that we've seen. Uh, it has a temperature and humidity sensor, accelerometer, read switch, and this is the PIR version. Oh, it also has light level built in as well. So it's really, there's a lot packed into a small box. The third generation has been a, a slight revision, which has even more improved the battery life, um, which is already excellent. So they now have enough data to give you really accurate uh, expectations of how many times you can transmit, how long your battery will last at different spreading factors. Um, so you can get 15 years of battery life out of these, which is pretty impressive on a tiny coin cell. Um, the third generation of the PIR is interesting because it has different clip-on masks. So this is the default mask, which is used for putting on a wall and watching people go backwards and forwards. But if you wanted to put it on a ceiling and look downwards, this would cover quite a big area. So actually there's a, there's a narrow aperture mask, which will fit over here. And if you mount it now above, you'll see a much smaller area underneath. So you can get good granularity um, in things like occupancy of toilet cubicles or desks or meeting rooms. Um, so that's really interesting. They also have another mask which uh, works in under desk applications. So this is where you mount the unit this way up underneath the desk looks out at where the person would sit. So that mask prevents it seeing other people around and it just focuses in. Um, so that's really useful for desk occupancy in hot desking and things like that. Um, they've also now got a magnet that goes with these because each one has a built-in read switch. And so the two paired together make a really neat and small uh, door or window opening detector as well. So it's a really powerful sensor. But if you want something that is single function, then the Bro and Tab sensors are probably the way to go. Uh, so these are very low cost. Um, this is the temperature and humidity version. We also have a door and window read switch version and a PIR motion sensor. But they've added a few new interesting sensors as well this year. So we've just got these in. There's an ambient light sensor, a sound level sensor, and a water leak sensor. So the ambient light sensor, so if I put this on the desk here, I'll see the light level uh, on my work surface. This is useful for compliance applications where you want to make sure that your factory or office space has enough light in it to make sure that people can see what they're doing. Um, it's also useful to see if rooms are occupied and corridors are being used. Um, the sound level sensor, uh, similarly, you can tell when people are around, but it can also be used in antisocial behavior type applications. You can hear when you've got noisy neighbors and prove how noisy they were, uh, but also it's got industrial applications as well. So you can tell if machines are running just by the noise they make. So that's actually really useful for working out if things like generators are running. It's one of the easiest ways to interface with them. Um, the water leak detector is really interesting as well. So this comes with a sensor on a wire here. Um, the sensor has uh, three small metal probes and you mount those facing down. And if water pools underneath the sensor, it will now send off an alert. Uh, the, it's on a, a cable so that you can mount the sensor uh, away from the, the transmitting unit and still get good reception. For example, you might want to put this under a washing machine or a dishwasher in case of leaks down there. You may also want to screw it to a wall near your boiler or in the bathroom. So there's lots of applications for that, getting a good early warning if you've potentially got leaks. So another interesting thing uh, this year is Tectelic's range of agriculture sensors. So they've got a couple of soil moisture sensors. So this is one with built-in probes. It has I think they're about 100 mil long probes. These just go straight into the ground and it measures the water content between the probes. 
So these are really good in farming applications, in greenhouses and growing, but also in things like um, groundskeeping, maintenance, uh, golf courses, automatic watering applications. Uh, they also have built-in temperature and humidity sensor uh, in the top of the unit and a light level sensor as well, so you can tell how much sunlight you're getting. And um, there is, if you want probes that go slightly deeper, there's the external probe version. So this takes a watermark probe and a temperature probe. You can put these together and bury them down at the same point. So if you've got uh, a crop with deep roots, you might want to measure much further down into the soil and then have the sensor up where it can get LoRaWAN reception. Uh, these sensors can actually support two sets of the probes. So you can measure at two levels in the soil as well, just with one sensor. So that's pretty cool. And they also have, if I can bring this out here without knocking too much stuff over, our longest LoRaWAN sensor is the Tectelic Mulch Probe. So this on the pointy end here, we've got a temperature sensor. And then this is the LoRaWAN box at the top. Uh, so you, Put this down into a pile of grain, mulch, uh, into anything, into silos, and you can measure the temperature of uh, the contents. So this is being used right now in Scotland in an agricultural application, uh, monitoring temperature of grain piles. And um, apparently, if you stack up a pile of grain, uh, it, it can catch fire if the heat of the um, the natural processes going on inside of the bacteria consuming the grain, uh, the heat can become too much and the whole thing can catch. Uh, and then you burn down the building that's holding it, which is pretty bad. So putting these probes in is uh, is a really good early warning to see how stable your, uh, your temperatures are. So you can see if things like your compost heap are actually hot enough to properly kill off bacteria all sorts of things. Um, so those are those are interesting. This is the, actually the short version. This is the four foot version. There's an eight foot version as well, um, which handily enough folds in half because our office isn't actually that wide. Finally, we are pleased to be distributors for M Climate. This is Vicky. Uh, it's a thermostatic radiator valve. Uh, M Climate have a few interesting products. Um, they also have a water valve, which is a remotely switchable. Uh, LoRaWAN controlled water valve. Um, but this is uh, the first thing we have of theirs, which is a thermostatic radiator valve. So this replaces the twiddly knob that you have on the end of your radiator. Um, it has a digital display on top, so you can see exactly what the set point is that you're, you're moving it to. Uh, but it's also remotely controllable over LoRaWAN. So it actually has a pin in the bottom which actuates the radiator valve to control how much water flows through and there's a servo inside that drives that. So when you remotely change the setting, the servo will actually spin and poke the radiator to get the, the amount of water just right. It dials in itself to each radiator, so it learns what temperature is controlled by, by how much pressure in the valve. Um, and yeah, so it makes it a really interesting device. So you can remotely turn the heating on or off in a room or set upper and lower bounds of what's acceptable. Uh, as well as changing the set point. Um, so this is a really interesting product and I think it's going to be cool, uh, especially when offices aren't that busy or you know people may be at home more as well, so you might need a bit more control there. Um, M Climate have given us a special discount code just for the Things Conference attendees. So if you use that, you can get one or two units at a really great price and have a play with those, work out some integration. Um, and that will be available on our website just for the duration of the conference. Um, so for details on all the products here and that discount code as well, have a look at connectedthings.store slash TTC. Uh, that will have links to all of these products. Uh, in the meantime, give us a shout if you need a hand getting hold of devices, you need setup services or anything like that. Um, and also check back for gateways. Um, we've got as you may have seen, brand new Tectelic Gateway coming very soon, which is very exciting. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on our store. Um, thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully see you next year.